Well, we want to update you to an Israeli's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett meeting with Vladimir Putin at the Kremlin for three hours on Saturday. Bennett vowing to continue these talks with Putin, saying he had a moral obligation to help stem the war in Ukraine as hundreds of Jewish Ukrainians flee to Israel. And this was at a request of uh, President Zelensky that the two of them meet. So the meeting did happen. Now joining us to discuss more is the president and founder of Students Supporting Israel, Ilan Senelnikov, who just came back from Ukraine a few months ago. Ilan, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you very much for having me. We know this is uh, something that you are very closely tied to. Your family uh, immigrated to Ukraine from Israel to escape the Soviet Union in 1989. You say many of your relatives are there today. So tell us first off how they are. How are the Jewish Ukrainians that you are in contact with today at this hour, day 12? Yes, indeed. So actually right before I came to the studio, I spoke to my family in Ukraine and they said that they're preparing for a fight. Uh, both of my aunts are in Kiev right now, in the capital city. They are both serve as paramedics. And they said that if the Russians will come towards Kiev, they're not going to welcome them with flowers into the city. And I asked them, is Kiev is prepared to defend the capital? And everyone mentioned that they, they're ready to defend and they will do whatever it takes in order to kick out the Russian invaders. They are um, standing strong, and of course, the world is behind them, you know, sending their best wishes here. You know, we just showed Putin and Bennett uh, at the request of Zelensky meeting. Are, do you have any hopes for this? And also, I want to get your reaction. When you hear Putin talk about the denazification of Ukraine, what goes through your mind? Well, when we hear Putin talks about it, it's a little bit ironic because we know that the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, is coming from a Jewish background. When I was in Kyiv only four months ago and we met with the deputy foreign minister, he is also coming from a Jewish background and so as many Ukrainian current leaders in the parliament. So this argument is total absurd. Now, if the state of Israel and Prime Minister Bennett will have the chance to somehow help in the negotiations in order to end the war, that would be a remar remarkable achievement for the, such a small country as the state of Israel. And of course, we can all pray and hope and cross our fingers in order for Prime Minister Bennett to succeed in any talks with President Putin or let it be with President Zelensky. Talk to me about uh, Iran on the brink of signing this nuclear agreement, which Russia is actually negotiating. You have been very vocal about this, Ilan, the implications for Israel. What message do you want to send to the administration? Well, and this is something that's very, actually every Israeli is talking about it nowadays, what it will mean for Israel if there will be an agreement signed with Iran. There is a consensus between Israel left to right that the nuclear agreement with Iran is not a good agreement. And it's something that we can always look back, it's the history. In 1994, Ukraine got rid of its nuclear arsenal as it signed mm -hmm. an agreement with the United States, with the United Kingdom and Russia in order to secure Ukraine's uh, future and secures Ukraine protection in the next years. But 30 years down the road, the same Russia that signed an agreement with Ukraine also invaded Ukraine and is attacking Ukraine and killing Ukrainian people. So what does it mean for Israel? Should Israel really go and sign an agreement with Iran when 30 years down the road my children can be not protected or my family in Israel will be at jeopardy or at risk? Something that Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister Menachem Begin did when he bombed the nuclear reactor in Iraq many years ago and the whole world was surprised, he said that now we can send a message to our, child, to our children that they will forever be protected in the land of Israel. So as we go into this week and we're looking to see what will happen with the negotiations, we do hope that no matter what will take place, Israel will always have a chance to protect itself. And it's not just about Israel. It's also about our allies in the Middle East, yes. that it be the UAE, Bahrain or other Middle Eastern countries. Elon, we have just about 30 seconds left. I do want to ask you, um, how are you handling the fact that your family is there and they're refusing to leave? And, uh, you know, at some point they may not be able to. It is concerning. However, they decided to stay and we need to respect their decision. And nowadays it is Ukraine's fight. The people that are there, they know it is their fight and they will do whatever it takes in order to protect themselves. And this is no different to Ukraine nowadays or to the state of Israel. It is our fight and we need to make sure that we win it. Great perspective, and we obviously are thinking of your family, and we appreciate you taking some time to share this very important angle of the story with us today, Alan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me.